Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly educational platform for creating success and change in your club and career. We're very excited to have Todd Sammons, Director of Member Education for the PGA of America, joining us this morning. He's going to be presenting on uh, the PGM 3.0 and what mentoring PGA professionals and supervising PGA professionals need to know to help support their associates on their journey to Class A membership. Good morning, Todd. Thanks for being with us this morning. Hey, good morning, John. You're welcome. Uh, so what uh, what I was going to do is talk a little bit about 3.0, but also 3.1. Uh, as we have moved into 3.1 uh, in January, it's been... Uh, um, highly popular. Uh, it, we're already probably plus 450 associates just from the end of December until today. So uh, it uh, they're liking it. Uh, it's a it's a new vibrant um, deal with the uh, with the online material. Uh, they go through the material. It's it's the material, and and I'll start off by saying the material uh, is just presented differently, but the content is exactly the same. Uh, as it was for 3.0. The only difference in the two is, is that in 3.1, there's no testing. And when I say no testing, there are assessments along the way. Uh, but uh, if you, if you, if you go, sign up for the qualifying level, uh, you have to go through the content. In the content, you will be stopped uh, every once in a while to answer some quiz questions. And there's generally five to 10 quiz questions on there. You have to score 100% on that quiz to be able to move forward. Uh, if you're not uh, successful, then you can retake it as many times as you like. And if you feel like you need to go back through the content, you can go back through the content uh, to take the quiz again. But there's no 30-day wait or anything like that on the, on the quizzing process. Once you complete that quiz at 100%, it'll move you on to the next, uh, to the next subject or the next part of that subject. And then again, as you work through all the content uh, in the qualifying level, uh, you will, at the end of that content, you will be done. There will be no test that you have to take. You don't have to go, you know, you don't have to take a test online or anything like that. Just complete the, the material and the quizzes and, uh, and then you'll upload a resume for us. And then once you do that, you've completed the Q level. So that's the biggest fundamental difference from 3.0 to 3.1 is the test slash quiz taking process. That, that is correct. And uh, and we've had, look, we've had 19 people complete it overnight. I mean, they 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 paid one day and then completed it overnight. And the next day they're trying to- When you on. say when you say completed, what did they complete? Not, not the level one experience kit. Not level one. I'm talking about qualifying level. I'm starting all the way over on the left because they don't have to do a, a work experience uh, uh, kit. They just have to uh, complete the coursework and the quizzes involved in the coursework. And then they upload a resume and they're done with the Q level. So then they move on to level one and uh, level one, much the same. They will uh, they still have to uh, to attend the seminars. And that's three days of facility management and two days of teaching and coaching. It's our base. Uh, it's our it's our core level, if you will. Everybody has to do that. Uh, I do see a, a hand raised. I, I can take questions as we move. That's fine. I don't see the hand raised. I thought I saw one. But stop me along the way if you if you got questions. That's yeah, and just for all the and, and and just to make this as interactive as possible for all the members that are on this morning's webcast, you know this is a very important subject and there's a lot of detail to it. So if Todd's just running through it, obviously he's an expert at it. He knows it back to front. Uh, feel free to interject, stop him, ask questions, come off a mute, raise your hand. Uh, we want to make this morning's webcast as interactive as possible. So don't be shy. Absolutely, please. So once they move into level one, uh, again, you'll, they'll attend seminars. Uh, the seminars in level one are virtual, and uh, we do three days of facility management, two days of teaching and coaching. Uh, the, they will have to complete their portfolio, uh, and it's quite extensive. And then, uh, as it says there, they'll pass all quizzes, and that's within the coursework. So 
Uh, it's very, and again, it's very vibrant. It's uh, you move through it. There's videos. There's things that uh, you interact with uh, as you go through, and then you'll complete the quizzes uh, within the coursework. Uh, once you complete the quizzes and your portfolio is approved, uh, you are done with level one, and you, you obviously attend the seminars too. But uh, you're done with level one. Following level one, you'll have to choose a career path, and the career paths are listed there: golf ops, teaching and coaching, or executive management. I do, I still tell them, I've told them this in 3.0, um, that, you know, don't choose teaching and coaching because you think it's going to be easier. Uh, it's actually turned out to be a little bit harder, a little bit more in depth as far as the uh, portfolio goes. Uh, for instance, in level one in the portfolio, if they, if they um, uh, have to do, I think, three lessons that they have to video maybe the first five minutes and the last five minutes. Uh, in, in teaching and coaching in level two, they're going to have to do about 10 and in, uh, in video the lessons and, and submit those and fill out the paperwork and things of that nature. So uh, I ask them not to choose that. But if they're going to be a, if they're going to be teaching uh, full time, then that's that's the route that they want to go. So when you say that it that the teaching and coaching has turned out to be more difficult, is that by accident or is that by pass fail percentages? How what do you mean when you say it's turned out to be more difficult? It's, okay. it's, 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 uh, it's, I don't say that, I shouldn't say more difficult, but the perception is, is that if I go into teaching and coaching and level two and level three, that I'm just going to come uh, to seminars and, and we're just going to teach and coach and, and, you know, I'm going to do a, a, a short portfolio and send that in and, and, uh, and we're going to be done. But the assessment piece in the portfolio is, is larger than what people I think expected. So, uh, you know, it's it's turned out to be a little bit more intense than people thought it was going to be. Not that it's harder than the other two, uh, but it is a little bit more intense. And I didn't want I don't want any of the associates to go into teaching and coaching thinking that it's going to be the easy way out because it's not. So um, and then, you know, you, they can choose golf ops. I tell them if you're going to be if you want to be the HP, the head pro at your facility, golf ops is where you want to go because you're going to get a little bit of business and you're going to get a little bit of teaching. Uh, and if they if they have aspirations of being a GM or the CEO of the facility, uh, president of the club, whatever, whatever the title is, then they probably want to go executive management. Uh, but in executive management, level two and level three, there is no teaching. Uh, it's all about um, marketing and leadership and uh, and things that are managing people, really. And it's it's uh, it's a lot. You know, it's it's a lot about that um, as they move forward and managing those uh, those clubs and things of that nature. Uh, and obviously, I talked about teaching and coaching being for the people that want to aspire to teach. And if they want to aspire to teach, I definitely tell them that is the way that you want to go the teaching, and coaching and level two and level three. Uh, they're set up the same way. Uh, the only difference in, from level one as far as seminars go is they are in-person seminars. They have to come to Frisco. We changed that a little bit as well. We went back to the old days, and I don't know if uh, anybody on the call can remember this, but um, when I went through the business school, I've been a member for 30 years, and when I went through business schools, uh, we just paid for the school, we, and then we paid our way to get there and paid and found a hotel to stay in and things of that nature because um, it, and, and you can trim costs that way as well. I mean, I remember going to business school, one and three of us, um, you know, rented a hotel room and pushed two beds together and slept across the bed. So, uh, we, we were doing anything that we could to save money. We thought, uh, that by, by going back to that, uh, that it was going to be a cost savings to the associate. And it has turned out to be cost savings to the associate. We give them a list of hotels that are in the area that are charging $99 a night. Uh, we have trimmed down the seminars on Fridays to about three o'clock uh, because you can get out of Dallas DFW uh, that night and get back home. That that'll save you another night in a hotel. Um, and we, um, you know, provide them the opportunity to pick any one of those hotels that they want to, and and then um, we just charge seven fifty for the seminar, and uh, and then they uh, they take care of the rest. And we do that. We ask them in 30 days in advance, too. We, we send them the information at least 30 days in advance, uh, sometimes 45 days in advance, just to give them an opportunity to, you know, get the cheapest airfare that they can get if they're coming in. So moving into 3.1, coinciding with the move to Frisco, is would you say the whole program overall is more user friendly? Very much so. Very much so. And um, as I said before, our... Uh, 
our the people that are taking part and in getting into it has has gone up exponentially um and in q level and level one and uh and they're uh, the, by all accounts they're loving it they're loving the material they're loving the way that they uh that they go through the material now it's not just a it's not just a manual that they're opening up and reading now. It's, uh, again, very interactive with a lot of uh, pictures, videos, and things of that nature uh, that they go through uh, when they go when they go through the material. So there's a question from uh, James. Uh, what are the new PAT requirements to complete the Q level? So that's a membership question, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll handle it as well as I can here. Um, and and if you need more information, I would I would uh, you know ask that you call the 800-474-2776 number and ask membership. But the new rules, as I understand it, is is that you can put uh, two 18 hole rounds together from two different uh, PATs if you like. Uh, the first rule is is to get into level one, you have to have a um, qualifying score. And a qualifying score is nothing more than uh, basically uh, half of what the target score would be. So if the target score was 150, uh, you would have to have at least 75 plus five. So you can shoot 80 and have a target score. You can have a score that will allow you to, uh, to get into level one. And then you would have to pass the PAT uh, by the end of your nine-year period now. Uh, to and 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 go through all of this uh, coursework here and complete all of that to be um, elected into membership. If one of the other changes was, and I'm, this has been about two years ago, I think, or a year and a half ago, uh, that if you don't pass that PAT, but you've completed all the other requirements for membership, uh, then you can go into a B25, uh, uh, and and you can be a B25 until you pass the PAT. So you're not kicked out of the program or anything like that. Um, the other part of that is uh, that now, as I said before, you can put two 18 hole rounds together. So if you play, you know, if you play great in one and uh, one 18 holes in one PAT and you don't uh, play as well to pass the second, but then you go into another PAT and you play great on one of those, you can put the two of those together and, um, and, and qualify and, and meet your PAT requirement. So you may not know the answer to this question, but does National do that connection of those two rounds on their own, or do you have to request it? How would they? I know you're you're probably going to have to request it, um, but again, I would call membership just to verify that. Yeah, there there'd be no way. I mean, I guess there would be a way, but I, I don't see how they would like. And let's say you connected one from. Uh, you know, your your level one, and then you didn't go to level three till eight years later, and that's when you pat you had the other one. You know, to put those together. I don't know that they have the ability to do that, and I don't know how long that lasts either. I don't know if if that if that one score lasts till you know nine years, and 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 you can put the two together at the end of nine years. I would assume that you could, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. You need to call membership on that one. Now, have we had a live level one? seminar at uh or summit at frisco yet i know it was virtual and only level two uh had had been at frisco up until january i believe are we doing live testing and live summits at frisco for level one we're not doing any testing um and level one um we're um we're still doing all of that virtual uh, that was so well received, well received when we did uh when we did these things virtual in um uh, uh, through COVID, and uh, the the board decided that they wanted to keep uh, level one virtual, and then uh, make level two and level three uh, in person. So we started all of those back in April of last year. Actually, it's almost been a year uh, here in Frisco, and uh, and they're going extremely well. So there's no plan to ever take level one off of virtual and have people going to Frisco for that. I won't say that. I, I know that. I know that they. And when I say they, I think the board, um, you know, we there, there's been discussions of maybe having level one uh, come to Frisco and then maybe level two virtual, but we haven't worked through any of that yet. And uh, and there's obviously a lot of things that need to happen for that to happen. Uh, for instance, teaching and coaching. I don't see how if you chose the teaching and coaching 
um, you know, level or the uh, career path and teaching and coaching, how you could do level two virtual because it's a lot of hands on basically teaching and coaching and level two and level three. Uh, you spend maybe an hour or two in the classroom in the morning and then you're teaching the rest of the day or watching teachers teach and um, and learning you know different things throughout that week. It's more hands on than it than it ever has been. So not sure how that works. So right now it's level one virtual level two and level three are in Frisco. So Steve Monday, our operations manager for the SoCal section, just uh, uh, put up a note on the in, the in the question box and said that the PAT scores when combining must be within one year of each other. So thank oh, thank you. you. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. I had no idea. That's and again, I tell I tell every class that comes in here, you know, that they'll ask about their um, uh, their work experience credits. Uh, and I say, you know, look, I, all I know is that you have to have 28, but you need to contact membership. We're the experts in education. Uh, they're the experts in all the qualifications that you need to have for membership. So I, I do know that you have to complete this PGM 3.1 program or the 3.0 program. Uh, and, um, and that's all I know for sure. And, and, uh, and I know for sure that you have to have a PAT, but I just don't know what all the rules and regulations are, obviously, because I didn't know how long you could take to connect them. There's also some of if you played college golf um, and you had um, you, you could use some of your college golf scores, too. I do know that. But I don't again, I don't know what that what the the rules are. So, you again, please call membership or email on one of the two. So, um, you know, once you get obviously through level two and level two is uh, much the same. And uh, as far as seminars go, you're going to attend seminars. You're going to go through the coursework, do the quizzes. And uh, and then you're going to complete a work experience portfolio. Uh, the the uh, I will say that the seminars and teaching and coaching are are teaching and coaching for five days. There's not a whole lot of business going on there. Uh, golf operations is exactly the same as level one. You're going to have three days of facility management, two days of teaching, and then executive management is five days of executive management, including uh, the subjects that I talked about before: leadership, marketing, um, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, OSHA laws and st we, we go deep into tax laws and stuff like that about um, uh, in, in that in that particular career path. Uh, once you complete your, your portfolio is approved and you've gone through the coursework, answered all the quizzes, then uh, you're done and you go to level three. Uh, level three is a little bit different, but uh, much the same as far as uh, seminars go that I just described in level two. It, it is the same level two uh, for um uh, the seminars we do in golf ops and teach and uh, I'm sorry, golf ops and executive management. Uh, we run a business simulation uh, and where they operate their own uh, their own golf club in a simulated experience and they they compete against other teams. We just ran it. We have an executive management level three in here right now. Uh, and we just ran it yesterday. It's a great learning experience. Uh, so the golf ops people and the, the executive management people get an opportunity to run through that uh, and learn from that. Uh, once they complete their work experience portfolio and all the coursework in level three, including the quizzes, uh, they then have to take what we what we call a, a cumulative final exam. And that exam consists of all of, not all of them, but all the levels, level one, two, and three. Uh, and the quiz questions that they've already seen, the questions for this exam will come from those quiz questions. So that you've seen the questions um, and you'll have access to all that as you move through, because once you complete level one and go into level two, you still have access to level one. Once you complete level three, you still have access to levels one, two, and three. So uh, you'll be able to go back through those quiz questions and uh, and be able to take that final exam. Once you complete that final exam, uh, then you you become a member uh, of the PGA. Um, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you have to make sure that you have you have completed the PGA PGM program, but you still have to make sure that you've got the other requirements for membership uh, taken care of. And we also you know, we ask and when we in level three, when they're here, we tell them, look, you're real, really close to becoming a member. If you've got all your ducks in a row, go ahead and fill out that PGA membership application and send it to membership. And then uh, so once you complete 
you know, you get your requirements complete, like the PAT and your work experience credits and your and and complete this program, uh, then it's it becomes a little faster to be able to become, uh, you know, get your membership. Now, Todd, have we? Uh, do you have the rough breakdown of how many associates going from level one to level two are going into teaching and coaching versus golf operations and executive management? Where is the, where's the demand and where is the major flow? So that's a great question. So when we first started this, we thought we, we said that 70 percent uh, would go to uh, we, we thought that 70 percent would go to golf ops. We thought that 20 percent would go to teaching, coaching and 10 percent to executive management. So what has happened is, is we we uh, we survey everybody in level one and we ask them where, what they what they're going to choose. And we were shocked at what we got back. What we got back was like 50 percent uh, teacher, 50 uh, percent uh, uh, golf ops, 49 percent uh, teaching and coaching and one percent uh, executive management. However, how it's panned out, I think what they do is they get back to their facilities and talk to the, the people that are. Uh, that are helping them and they decide something different because what happens is, is it's almost exactly what we thought it was going to happen. 68% choose golf ops, 22% choose teaching and coaching and 10% choose executive management. And that's, that's exactly where we're at today. Um, I will hit a little bit on the 3.0 program too, and, and how people can uh, transition from, 3.0 to 3.1 if they want. If they're in 3.0 uh, and they have completed testing in level one, then they cannot transfer to 3.1. They, they need to go ahead and complete level two and level three in the 3.0 program. If they have not tested uh, in 3.0, then they can trans in, in level one, 3.1, uh, 3.0 level one, they can transition to 3.1. The only thing that would require them to go back through uh, the coursework and complete all of the quizzes, and then, uh, and the, obviously the portfolio is 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 exactly the same in 3.1 as it was in 3.0. So uh, they can do that. Uh, and again, if they're up, if they're beyond 3. Point, if they're up beyond 3.0 level one, then they have to complete 3.0. And we'll run that program until you know everybody uh, trits out or or completes the program uh, within their nine year acceptable progress. So with the 3.0 program across all 41 sections, more or less the percentage of suspended associates is anywhere from 17 to 30 percent, depending on the section. Was the, the decision to go from 3.0 to 3.1 in the quiz format, uh, was that part of the decision making or were there other factors that led to, to that change in test taking? Yeah, that, that was not part of the decision making. The the part uh, what what was the part of the decision making was was that uh, there were a couple things that went into it. Number one, um, you know, the, the adult learners learn more through going with hands on activities that they and and the coursework that's more vibrant that they can go in and interact with that uh, with that coursework. Uh, so that was the biggest. Uh, deal that we had uh, we had we did have a lot of people that um, you know failed the test and and uh, we you know we wanted to kind of eliminate that uh, and let's be honest we 50 percent I think is the number in level one that had traded out uh, and we're trying to plug that hole we're trying to keep people in uh, we need members and uh, we're trying to plug that hole and basically the early uh, consensus is, is that we've done exactly that because uh, people are moving through it and they've moved through. Uh, and another thing I'll say too is, is that, and, and this is, you need to know this, uh, in level one, uh, we, we, um, uh, we presented that in January. So January 10th, I think is when we started level one in the 3.1 program. It takes time to build these things. And you'll see if you, if you see any of this information, uh, if your assistants uh, have, access to this and they're in that you know you need to look at it because it's very vibrant and it's very different than what we went through before it's it's a lot of work so but what we do is we we presented that in january we will introduce level two in july so if they if they uh if we can get it ready earlier then we will but it takes a lot of work uh, so 
what happens is, is if they if they are suspended or terminated and they do 3.1, uh, obviously they can't get out of termination until they or suspension until they purchase level two. We are allowing them to purchase level two in the 3.0 program, but doing nothing. They can't do anything. They can just purchase it. They get out of suspension. They get out of termination, uh, but they can't move forward until we get uh, the 3.1 program level two ready. When we do, then we'll transition them back into 3.1, but they cannot move on, nor can they complete levels two and level three and 3.0. If they're in 3.1, they have to stay in 3.1. So, um, you know, having said that, we probably got, I don't know, maybe um, 10 or 15 that have completed level one that we've done that with. Uh, we've had more than that that have completed level one, but 10 or 15 that were suspended uh, and, um, and or, or terminated. And we, so the rest of them just have to wait until we get level two ready. And once we get level two ready, we'll transition them all in. We'll contact them and tell them we're ready to go and they can complete level two. Same thing's gonna happen in level two though. They'll probably complete that pretty quickly. Um, want to move on to level three, but they can't do that. Uh, we're saying January, but I'm 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 pretty sure that we're going to have that ready uh, before then. But we we always want to, you know, under promise and over deliver. So we're 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 sticking with the July date and the January date, but hopefully we'll have it ready sooner. Well, the overall uh, consensus, you know, by with being able to combine the two different PAT scores in order to, to get a qualifying score, the quiz format uh, versus the test uh, format, the, the, the gut feeling is that we're making the program too easy for the purposes of getting more members. How do we balance that perception um, at the same time focusing on making it more user-friendly for the, for the associates? Yeah, so if again, the portfolio is what's going to catch them because we have, uh, for the first time, for, for a long time, that was very subjective. And, uh, and even in our department, you know, you might have one guy that was tough on them and another gal that was easy on them. I, you know, it just so what we do is we put together uh, rubrics that, that they can only, they have to choose um, out of, I think it's five different. Uh, uh, levels of, of of how they did in a, in a particular or how what they were grading in a particular uh, activity. And that's basically brought the curve down to almost level where everybody's uh, grading them the exactly same way. You can't really be um, just not as, as subjective as it was. And um, and, you know, we we have these universities out here for the first time. Uh, we started, I don't know, about a year or two ago that uh, we took over grading of all the portfolios in the university system as well so that again uh, we could all be on the same page as far as grading these things so um, and the portfolios are in depth they're in depth at each one the portfolio as um, as a um, you know as a testing uh, you know component is we've lifted that uh, to another level so it's it, we used to say that the testing would catch them, uh, but now we say the portfolio is going to catch them. If they're not, if they don't do that portfolio uh, the way that it is set out to be done, and they don't muster, you know, they don't measure up, then uh, then it's going to be sent back. They do have to wait. If they fail a portfolio, if a portfolio is sent back to them, they have to wait thirty days to resubmit it. So there are consequences uh, on both of those. Now. If somebody, you know, forgot to upload a, uh, a document and or they, we look and there's a blank document or there's a video missing, we contact them and we say, look, we, this might be an oversight on your part. And if it is great, we'll give you 24 hours to to upload it. And so we kept, you know, a lot of them, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty lenient on that. However, at the end of 24 hours, if they've done it they'll be able to upload it in 24 hours. If they haven't done it, there's no way they're going to complete it in 24 hours and, and it'll be sent back and they'll have to wait 30 days and complete the activity uh, to be able to do that. Now, in terms of the PGM schools out there, it used to be that in order to get the PGM degree and not just the marketing degree or the sports, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the BA degree, you used to have level one have to have level one completed before graduation in order to get the actual PGM degree. Is that still the same in 3.0 and 3.1? No, you have to complete the whole program. 
and and it's been difficult. Actually, some of the universities went away from having PGA PGM as the, there were a couple of universities that had PGA PGM as a degree. So if they didn't complete it, uh, then they didn't get their degree. I think most of the schools, uh, maybe all of them now don't do that. Like um, I know, for instance, um, uh, just because it's on top of my mind is uh, New Mexico State, their degree is in uh, is in marketing. So they can get their marketing degree and not finish their uh, their PGA PGM, but uh, then they can transition back into our program. Now, one of the things that we have done too uh, here with this uh, with this update is is that we've we've updated their material too to go back to them doing the same thing that we're doing. Uh, about three years ago, uh, they they decided the university. We met with the universities, and they said, "Look, well, you know these freshmen coming in at seventeen and eighteen, they can't do a business plan. They don't understand business planning. So let's move some of that out." So the 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 um, the programs became two different programs, which made if they didn't make it in the university and try to transfer back to an associate was impossible. I mean, they could do it, but they like some some could be in level three. They'd have to go all the way back to level one. And uh, and so what we did was we realigned we've now realigned the programs to where they're both the same. So if somebody can, you know, needs to transfer from our program, our program into the university program or the university program into our program, it's much cleaner and much easier. Now, there's been a fair amount of change with the PGM program over the last four or five, six years. Now that this three point one is in place, is there a steadfast plan to not change the program for a good period of time to kind of get away from that feeling that it's changing every other year? I wish. Uh, I, w I wish that uh, somebody would tell my boss that, but uh, <laughs> because that uh, causes us a lot of work. But no, I, you know, it's funny you say that because from 1967, I think it was until 1993 or four, uh, we didn't change. And everybody was you know, wanting, come on, can we change this program? Can we change it? And it didn't change. We were, we, we did the business school model for that whole time. And then all of a sudden in 95, we went to GPTP or 93, 94, something like that, GPTP. Uh, and then in 2000, we went to PGM 1.0. And then in 2010, I believe it was, we went to PGM 2.0. So there were, uh, and, and people were, you know, begging us to change it and change it and change it. And now we're getting, hey, just exactly what you just asked, John, is, is can we stop changing it? And, and it's like there, there was a quote by uh, by uh, the Google guy, Eric Schmidt, in 2003, and he made this quote. He said that uh, we now create more information in two days than was created from the dawn of civilization until 2003. Now, and I can imagine even up till today with all the things that are going on in our world that it's probably two hours that we're, you know, creating more. So we have to keep up. And uh, if we don't keep up, we get stale. There was a time that we were in the uh, the education center in Port St. Lucie and the associates that were coming in the door knew more about technology than we did. That can't happen. So then we that's when we changed and we put the three bays in the uh, education center in Port St. Lucie. We changed the computer lab to a putting lab. Uh, and then once we moved out here, we've got all these bells and whistles on the first floor. If you haven't seen them, you need to come because it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, I mean, we got a bunker indoors. It's got a four foot lip and and uh, green side bunker. And then the other part of the, the bunker has two parts we can hit also. Uh, fairway bunker shots we pull a net in front of that one but um but it's just massive and it's amazing and and the uh, things that we have in the um you know in the hitting room we have seven hitting bays we have uh, seven that are that are about golf hitting bays and then uh, back uh, on the other side of those we have four hitting bays where we have all the latest technology and we can um, pull accordion doors back and hit from inside to outside on the range and and uh it's just I'm that I'm I'm, I'm only explaining Part of what we have so it's it's pretty and it's an amazing experience to be here and uh, to experience all that we have down there so with with the change in technology and the changes that are happening in our world today and as fast as they're that they're changing uh you know in in the ability that we now have to change i mean it used to be that we had these manuals and and if we had these manuals we had to send them back to somebody else to change it and that was a process 
uh, we now can change this real time. So we can, whatever we need to do to change, uh, we will change, but um, uh, we just want to make sure that we're relevant, that we're, we're teaching the associates that are coming through uh, our program uh, to be successful in the business. And if it's the latest and greatest, then we have to do the latest and greatest to be able to do that. Well, it's not just you at national, it's us at the club course and facility level, you know, being able to keep up with the information that's out there. I mean, there's definitely a correlation to mentoring PGA professionals that are not in touch with what it takes to become a PGA member now, and the fact that we are starving for associates, and there's less associates now per PGA member, and that, that breakdown is a, there's a wider a uh, uh, gap between those two more now than ever before. There's got to be a correlation between the two. There's no question about it. Yeah, you know, I, I think it was, uh, I may get this wrong, but I, I'm, I'm going to be pretty close. I think 20 years ago, maybe 30% uh, of the associates that were coming through, maybe 40% had college degrees. Uh, today, it's like 90%. I mean, and uh, so we've got people that are they're learners. They want to learn. They want to be better, and they want to do good. And uh, and that's and we want them to you know we we want all members, associates and members to get rich and retire early. I mean, if we can do that, uh, you know that's that's what we're about. So, and and I tell them you know it's not it's not like you know the, there was this there was this misconception that we were trying to weed everybody out. You know we, we level one is a weed out. Uh, uh, level and that's not true. I tell every one of them. I say, look, our proudest moment as an education staff and department is when they stand up next to us with comma PGA behind their name, and I will help them do whatever I can do to get them across the finish line. We have twelve, but we have the biggest staff we've ever had in education. We got twelve faculty members that are on our mentor line and. Uh, and on our mentor email, uh, they are here to help and they will help. I'm, I'm not going to take your test for you. Uh, you wouldn't want me to do that anyway. But um, uh, anything other than that will help you get through the coursework, the portfolio, help you get here. That's the other thing we've done, too. We don't we no longer have a 30 day deadline either. So if if somebody wants to come, if somebody was in Southern California and, and they wanted to come to the seminar next Monday and they were eligible to come, uh, they can call me now and, and we'll get them signed up and they can come. I mean, they have to take care of their own travel, but but we can get them here. If they can get here, we can get them in. So um, we don't have any limitations basically right now on level one because we could take, you know, we had one a couple of weeks ago, there's 150. Uh, I do split them because uh, that's too many to handle on one Zoom call or or uh, or Google call. So I mean, in Google, yeah, I think Google Meets, you can do 250, but it just the experience is terrible because there's so many people in there and people aren't answering questions and asking questions. And so there's 70, we split them up, and uh, but uh, they can get in anytime, uh, level two and level three. Uh, level two teaching and coaching, we do, um, we, only, we only let 24 come in teaching and coaching. Uh, just because we have three teachers and we want to make sure that we have a good teacher to uh, to student ratio. Uh, and we've never really gone. I think one time we reached that 24 uh, and we had to shut it off. But but generally, we don't have to shut those off. And uh, and the other ones, you know, right now uh, we struggle a little bit, but uh, because our seminar rooms aren't aren't ready uh, downstairs. But once they get ready, we can have, you know, 120 like the old days. So. We're, we're going in a good direction. Got another question here from Brian Bishop. You said earlier that we need new members. And while the mentorship program helps ensure retention once they're in, what is the PGA of America doing to attract quality candidates to start the 3.1 program? So, you know, that's great. Uh, so for the first time in, in, uh, since I've been, uh, you know, uh, involved in education uh and, and i think it's the first time since maybe the year 2000 when we started you know having an education faculty uh because everybody was adjunct before that but now uh for the first time we're in the same building with uh all of our um, stakeholders and industry leaders as far as our c-suite and uh, and the staff uh here at education so one of the things that we've been doing is we've been working with the employment consultants 
and they have a recruiting team now. And so they they and they're in all areas of the country. And so they're recruiting, um, they're recruiting associates to, to you know, they're recruiting people to get into the business and trying to uh, find people to, to take part uh, in this and complete this. Um, that's one of the things that we're doing. And that's one of the things that, you know, they're, they're working heavily, and, you know, never have we had a recruitment team. So we've got a recruitment team that's out in the, out in the field, trying to get people interested in the golf business. We also uh, send people to a lot of the junior tournaments, uh, the junior championship, uh, the PGA junior championship and, and things of that nature, uh, and try to get them pumped up if they want to, if they want to uh, get in the golf industry and get in the golf business and, and, um, and, you know, we're there to help them do that. So those are a couple of things that we're doing. There's some other things that are in the pipeline, uh, that, uh, that, you know, will be coming soon. You talk about the percentage of, uh, uh the percentage breakdown of associates going into teaching and coaching golf operations, executive management out in the, uh, in, in, in the, in the field, where is the largest demand in your opinion? I'd say the largest demand, um, you know, is executive management actually, uh, getting, getting people prepared to run the whole business. And there's nobody better in our opinion to run the whole facility than the golf professional. And, and, uh, you know, while there, and, and there's a lot of people, and there's probably people on this call that never wanted to do that. And uh, I actually, I was one of them. I never wanted to be a general manager. I wanted to be a head golf professional. And I actually got thrown into the general manager role and, and um, in a couple of facilities and, and it turned out okay, but you know, I was, I wanted to be a green grass golf professional and, um, and there's people out there like that. And that's, that's what golf ops is for. Uh, but I think the biggest demand that we have is, is, you know, trying to run these, run the clubs and run the facility as a GM or, or a uh, CEO or things of that nature uh, right now, the teaching and coaching. I mean, people love teaching and coaching and we do need teachers, but uh, you know, in the golf ops, I think the golf ops is the most well-rounded uh, individual as far as what we put them through uh, here in the education uh, department. So, Todd, looks like we've got time for one more question, unless, unless there's going to be more hands raised in the in the uh, in the audience. What is your biggest piece of advice for the PGA members that are on this call as mentors and support figures for their associates? What's your biggest piece of advice that you could give us? Stay involved, uh, stay involved with them along the way, uh, help them, let them uh, one, one of the biggest, biggest uh we survey all of our associates when they come in here because we'll change the program too, based on, you know, not what they want, but what they need. And they tell us through those surveys, what, what they need as far as an education goes. So we'll change our program uh, based on that too. But what the other thing that we, we survey them on is, um, uh, and we do very well in every area of the surveys, except for one area. Uh, and, and that area is support tools. And when you think of support tools, you're probably thinking about, well, the access to all this stuff and things of that nature. That's not what I'm talking about. And support tools, we ask them a couple of questions. One question we ask them is, is did you have an opportunity to discuss with your golf professional before you came, uh, you know, about uh, what you're going to experience and not not what you're going to experience, but, you know, what you need to learn when you come. Uh, the other thing is, is that when you returned, uh, did you have an opportunity to implement anything you learned? And then uh, and then when you returned, did you sit down and talk to your golf professional about what you learned about your uh, your leader? And and those if we if we on the scale, if we, everything that we do is like nine to ten and it's a zero to ten scale with support tools and those questions. It's like five, you know, five or six. And 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 look, a lot of it is. Uh, on the associate, they just don't discuss it. Or they don't come back and discuss it. Maybe they have, but maybe they have fears that, well, my golf professional, you know, he does things this way, and he's not gonna, you know, like this. So I'm not even gonna mention it. So uh, talk to them when they come back. Stay involved. Talk to them when they come back from these uh, uh, from these uh, uh, seminars. Ask them what they learned. Ask them, 
you know, if there's anything that they feel like that they could implement and that's your choice, whether you implement it or not as the golf professional, but ask them because uh, I think that keeps them involved um, and, and keeps them, uh, you know, learning and meet with them on, uh, you know, obviously you're in the golf shop with them pretty much every day, but um, set them, you set some time aside to discuss their, their, uh, their, uh, you know, how they're proceeding through the program. Fantastic. Well, Todd, on behalf of the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA, thank you very much for carving out some time this morning to come on and present. Uh, for the PGA members that are on this morning's webcast, you will get one PDR credit for uh, attending Todd's uh, presentation. And we will be sending out uh, the YouTube recording of Todd's presentation this morning, along with this snapshot uh, slide that, uh, that we referred to today. Thank you for supporting the Catalyst, everybody. Thank you, Todd, for being with us. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir.